Welcome back to the charismatic voice. If you're like me, sometimes you just need to get away. And the sound of the road underneath your car and the blur of movement somehow makes everything seem more still. So the title of today's song, Be Quiet and Drive, really instantly connected to me. And I'm very excited to hear it now for the first time. Let's get to it. Okay, I'm sorry, Chino. Your vocals are incredible. And I'm part of the reason I'm doing this is because I just really want to hear more Chino Moreno. But I'm going to go back to the beginning. There was a really interesting just inhale as a vocal uh, introduction that caught my attention there in a great way. Additionally, he almost looks like he's conducting. It's fascinating. I'm wondering, does he have experience conducting? Or it almost, it looks sort of like a very raw form of it. So I don't know that he ever really worked on that, but instead it looks like almost like a Mickey Mouse in Fantasia in the way he's like, there is magic there and there is magic there. And there was some really cool panning also when the song first got started, there was just a lot of cool things happening. So let's go back and check them out again. See, all panned to the left right now. That is so cool. It's like a shaky breath, almost like somebody is um, panicking and just needs to get away, right? So fascinating. One other thing that's really fascinating in here, um, there's some, first of all, the tilt, whoa. There's like, they're playing with perspective in so many interesting ways in this music video. There's blur and focus and blur and focus. It's happening a lot of times. I think that they might be playing off that idea of blur in driving as well. Or maybe that's just because I'm connecting to the song in my particular way. You might interpret it in a totally different way. And that's, that's a good thing. We should all have different interpretations of great songs. Okay, back to the beginning one more time. Oh, the wind too was really cool. Like driving in the wind. Anyhow, whew, lots of good things. That tilt. <laughs> and there's that focus that they're playing with over and over the wind. Breath. saying there. Let me know in live premiere if you do. His vocals are haunting. It's shivering. It, it's truly, uh, it gives this incredible atmospheric vibe to really heavy music. And it becomes just an incredible combination. I love the intensity of them and how much emotion is felt often just in one sustained pitch. It's just, it's the example of how humans don't even need to actually say anything. Just sing one pitch and we know your heart. Whoa. Back to his entrance here. Ooh. So
this is like this is exactly the perfect song for that driving moment where you just yeah you want to get away from everything and and it feels like the world is almost too busy or maybe there's been so much just stimulation and you can't sort it all out or there's emotional waves from everything around you and you need to just go somewhere and let everything pass you by for a while i really love the entire soundscape here and the way that the instruments they to me feel like the chaos that can be in the world at times and then his voice feels like it's like this it feels like me somehow right i feel instantly like his voice relates to how i feel that's that's a superpower and it it feels like it's sort of that uh, just still but full of emotion center that you can find. And there are times when he's even yelling out that feels like maybe it's a yell that I, I need some space, people. Or, you know, let me go sort through all of the thoughts and feelings that I have right now. Anyhow, it just connects. This really connects. Wow. We're back again. That moment, let's just technically talk about what's happening there. He's doing these creaks is uh, the kind of sound where the there's not yet enough air pressure to sustain regular phonation in the vocal tract yet. So there has to be amount, a certain amount of air pressure that's gathered underneath the vocal folds for them to go wacka, wacka, wacka at a regular rate for them to oscillate. And once they start doing that, then you get a true pitch. But that sort of croaky sound at the beginning, it's very similar to a valley girl fry. That is when there's not yet enough air pressure built up. It's kind of a just floppy vocal fold sound. He actually he uses it in a couple different ways there. I've heard him use this a lot. And that's the kind of thing that you also pick up on a microphone really, really well. But if you're doing opera, uh, that's it tends to be rather quiet. And also you need a fairly loud dynamic to really get out into an audience without a microphone. So it's not something that we see in classical vocal technique much, but we see it a lot more in contemporary vocal technique. <laughs> I love the way that as he's holding out some of these notes, he gives like the feeling of something sort of peeling off the top. Where we get just a little extra uh, distortion, a little bit, it's like just a tiny bit of gravel in the sound as if there's a little pain in what he's singing, but then he has a very pure natural tone underneath. That's very true there. There, a little more grit. So that a key shift, or well, it's, it wasn't as much a key shift, it's like a tonal shift. That up until that point, it feels a lot more minor and then there feels like there's a release essentially right coming up, right there. It just makes me smile. I wonder what's up with the water. Looks like we had like a fire hydrant or something in the back or uh, a hose definitely that had a ton of water pressure behind it. Unlike Chino's vocals, which have very, very little air pressure in general, he sings quite 
quietly for the most part. It's quiet with intensity, which is hard to accomplish. I've worked with tons of vocal students and figuring out how to bring intensity into a quiet dynamic is more tough than singing loud. It's like you have to figure out how to be loud first and then how to take that same intensity and channel it through a much smaller area. A lot of times when people sing quietly, they'll drop their support. And that means that they won't have enough breath going underneath them to sustain the kind of intensity that he has here. It just, it doesn't communicate as well to other people. Your message stops feeling urgent. It doesn't, it doesn't pack the emotion into it that I feel that singing really needs to have to, uh, to make a big impact. So uh, I have so much respect for the little tiny details and nuances that we hear in his voice because I know how hard it can be to get there. Whew. Oh, go back a little more. Ha 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 ha. Right? It's quiet, but intense. That's a great example of the way he was taking and uh, putting in and taking away distortion on top of the vocal line. Whoa, one more time. to release when it gets to that moment. It's like my whole body just feels like it opens up, like there's sort of a uh, like outer, not just a shivering, but an expansion and a release when I hear them reach that moment in the music. That, whoa. I don't know what makes that so awesome. I like we could go down and look at all of the music theory behind it and how this uh, shift is totally very pleasing. Uh, but I think it's just so many combinations of things. And ultimately, people aren't constructing songs with that kind of analytical view. They're often constructing it through a lot of intuition. And there's just something magical, I think, about how human beings are able to intuit, like, oh, this is going to feel incredible. And then all of them get on that same wavelength. People actually uh, can have their brains sort of line up on wavelengths when they're feeling beats at the same time. It's fascinating. But I think ultimately this way of feeling music together and maybe having a bunch of people who inherently understand music you end up coming out of it with this song that can make an audience member feel that incredible release. It's just, it's really awesome. <laughs> That was interesting. So much distortion. I figured out, I think his voice sounds to me like a tormented angel. There is so much a light, fluffy, uh, almost naivety to it at times. There's innocence in it at times. And then you get this distortion and this the human, uh, the creakiness in it that feels like there's just an overwhelming amount of emotion on something that otherwise feels so pure. Tormented angel.
intention in that. Wow. I think he's, it sounds like he's using some upper laryngeal structures for creating that distortion. I'd probably say it's what most people refer to as fry. It doesn't sound like it's false focal fold. So the fry will be a lot higher up. And in the course that I made with uh, Will Ramos and Chris Lipe, we talk about sort of where those things are in your vocal tract. And I like to discuss them as lower and upper constrictions because that's anatomically what's happening. And I feel that that can help people get to that sound a little quicker. I love how much this upper constriction is just driven by emotion. It sounds free. And even though it, it's heart wrenching, I don't think it's vocally constructed or uh, con vocally deconstructive uh, because you hear that really pure sound that keeps happening underneath, probably recorded on two different tracks, but uh, definitely would have to be performed live as well. Was a big shift. It felt uh, almost progressive in this moment. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> I have to tell you, this is taking me back to high school when I used to, on choir tours, uh, grab a couple friends and if we were especially like on the west side of Washington State where it rains a lot, we would go out and go puddle jumping. This is incredibly freeing. I, I highly recommend it, though it was probably very, very dirty. I just did not care at that time. And uh, and maybe people should care less about this. Um, but I would go out and uh, jump in puddles in parking lots. I highly recommend wearing shoes and uh, and having a good time and not caring if you get what because hey, it's fun, it's liberating. There's probably a lot of oil. Don't drink the water, okay. Splish splash. Oh. There's such cool sounds too, right in there. Some of that is vocal, I think. Burb. <laughs> Burb was disturbed. Uh, one more time back there, because I think that those are vocal sounds, but there's a little piece of me that's really doubting it, actually. I mean, it could be a combination of distortion and instrument. Whoa, I'm not sure. Cool. Music is so good. I love the release of this song. I love the way that music can just transport us the way that this one did back to so many moments in childhood and so many really packed emotional moments when I just went and I went out for a drive to let it all go. I love the way it connects here. It's incredible. And if you want some more analysis of songs that do that kind of connection, you can check out this playlist over here. May you fall more in love with music every day.